Hey everybody, I'm Paul Esther Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green, and to new and old viewers alike, welcome to my channel. Again, my name is Paul Esther Jr., uh, Paul Esther Jr., excuse me, a.k.a. Boy Green, and every Monday, heading into the 2021 NFL Draft, I'm going to release Mock Draft Monday content right here on this channel, and it could be what exactly what we're going to be doing today, where I discuss a potential scenario for the New York Jets, answering your NFL Draft and Jets question, perhaps, or... It could be an amazing guest interview revolving around one of the top prospects in the draft or just the draft in general. All of this content, by the way, can be found on my Mock Draft Monday playlist, which you can find on my channel. Some of the things that are already in there include, I did an interview with BYU offensive coordinator and quarterback coach Roderick, and we talked about the recruiting of Zach Wilson, pro player comparison, and also addressing all the criticism around Zach Wilson as a player. What is warranted and what isn't? He's the guy who recruited uh, Zach Wilson to BYU. He initially was committed to Boise State, brought him over. Some great storytelling there uh, from Coach Roderick, and he's been there every step of the way with Zach Wilson. So a fascinating interview. That's already in my Mock Draft Monday playlist. You can check that out. I've also got some future interviews scheduled with some of the top NFL draft gurus in the business, some coaches for some of these teams, and so much more. If you like what you're seeing right now or like what you've seen in the past, please consider hitting that subscribe button. The love from you guys, the fans, has been overwhelming. It increases my excitement every day to produce content for all of you guys. So give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for the overwhelming support. Uh, it's been fantastic. But let's put all that aside. I appreciate all of that, but let's get into the show uh, today. And on today's Mock Draft Monday, I'm going to be evaluating the top five tradeback options for the New York Jets with the second overall pick. The great news is, Jet fans, there are options available. The Jets have options. The Jets can stay at two, take a pick, take a, any player they want. They could trade back from two. Hell, they could even trade that pick to Deshaun Watson, or to the Houston Texans for Deshaun Watson. So they could trade back in this draft. They could trade out of it entirely uh, in terms of that second overall pick spot to the Texans. There's so many options. But let's get into the trade back options because that's a realistic possibility here for the New York Jets. So here's what I've done. I've picked five different potential trades that the New York Jets should consider moving from the second overall pick back in this draft. We're going to work our way, uh, or work our way from five to one. Now let's start out at number five, the New York Jets and the Chicago Bears. Now, I'm going to, each time I explain, I'll mention the two teams that are going to be involved. I'm going to mention the compensation, and then I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit, my thought process and why I included kind of this fantasy draft trade into the equation. So first off, number five, the New York Jets and the Chicago Bears. The Jets would send the second overall pick to the Chicago Bears in exchange for the 20th overall pick in this year's draft, the 52nd overall pick, that's their second round pick, a 2020, uh, 2022 first round pick, and a 2022 second round pick, and linebacker Roquan Smith, formerly of Georgia. Now, if you just hear that on the surface, you're going to be like, Paul, that sounds like a monster offer. And well, it is. The Chicago Bears, they're a new hierarchy. Well, not really new. It's an old hierarchy. Is Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. They're on thin ice. They were brought back to this team by the hair on their chinny chin chins, which means they are going to be all in on trying to find their quarterback who is not named Mitchell Trubisky. So let's be honest. They reek of desperation. They've been sniffing around the Carson Wentz Eagle situation. They've called about Sam Darnold. So they're considering all options. Mine is a blockbuster. With the 20th overall pick, they put themselves in a terrible position. Were they talked about more than the New York Jets were during the season? Yes. When they were 5-0 and and had everything going for them. But then they collapsed like a used lawn chair. Now, they didn't make the playoffs, and they have the 20th overall pick. That's Well, they did make the playoffs, but they didn't do anything with it. That is exactly, they lost to the New Orleans Saints. So the point is, is they were in that purgatory. They're in the playoffs, but they really didn't have a realistic shot. And then because they're in the playoffs, they have a terrible pick, 20th overall. So they're not quite in the quarterback conversation. And by qu not quite, they're nowhere near the quarterback conversation for some of the top quarterbacks in this 2021 NFL draft. So they need help. And to get help, they're going to have to make a massive deal. Now, Moving from 20th all the way to the second overall pick is a massive uh, jump in terms of the NFL draft value chart. And there's no realistic way that the Bears can do that by only moving picks. They don't have enough picks to do it, quite frankly. 
So a massive deal of this magnitude will require some player compensation. Fortunately, the Bears have a slew of young defensive stars on that side of the ball that they could include to entice a potential team like the New York Jets. And Roquan Smith is an absolute star at linebacker. And if you look at from the Jets' perspective, look at the linebacking room. You have C.J. Mosley, who's played a game and a half in two years since he signed that mega deal with the New York Jets. Year number one, he looked great in that first half against the Bills. Then he got hurt. And then he was out for much of the year, came back in that New England Patriots game, and then obviously wasn't the same, was out the rest of the year. Then this past season, he opted out, which is fine. Everyone has the option to choose to opt out. But what are we really getting there? I don't think we know. I don't think Robert Sala knows. I don't think anybody knows. So why don't you get some insurance in an all-pro kind of player in Roquan Smith, a sideline-to-sideline guy, and he's a young and dynamic football player. I would love that move. Now, the Jets dropping from two all the way to 20. That one I'm not so in love with. That is a massive drop-off. You get a lot of picks, and you get a nice player in Roquan Smith. But again, that kind of concerns me from that perspective. That's why it's only number five on this list. But Roquan Smith could be a tantalizing option. Let's go to option number four. The New York Jets and the Carolina Panthers. The Jets would send the second overall pick. The Panthers, in exchange, would send the eighth overall pick, the 39th overall pick. That's in the second round. A 2022 first-round pick. And Yader Gross Matos, the former Penn State pass rusher. Now, the Panthers were willing to reportedly give up the eighth overall pick and some change in the Matthew Stafford trade negotiations, which means, obviously, they're going to be aggressive at the quarterback position. So the combination of picks and intriguing defensive talent in Yader Grossmatos, who is talented, there's no question about it, but an outside first-round pick guy that the Jets could get picks and a player that can help. I think that's important. No matter where the Jets are going, picks are great, but if you could get players too, uh, I think that's always going to help. And Grossmatos, again, is entering his second season. He's got intriguing traits, six foot five, 265 pounds. He's lanky. I like the potential there. Would have loved for the Jets to get him in last year's draft. They did not. They can rectify that by getting him here. And again, I think the Panthers are going to be super aggressive. So this eight to two combination is very possible for the New York Jets. Now let's get crazy. You want to get crazy? Let's get crazy. The New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I get to give a shout out to my main man, Play Like a Jet. You can also see it right here, uh, Play Like a Jet, for this potential idea. You can follow him on Twitter at Play Like a Jet. One, the New York Jets send the second overall pick and the 34th overall pick to the Dallas Cowboys for, wait for it, Jack Prescott and the 10th overall pick. Now, this would be a sign and trade deal. Now, there's a lot happening here, so let's try to evaluate all the layers. The 10th overall pick has about half the value. And by about, I mean exactly half the value of the second overall pick with 1,300 points. The Jets' second second overall pick is worth 2,600 points. The Cowboys' 10th overall pick is worth 1,300. So it is literally half the value. So obviously the Cowboys would have to make up ground to go from 10 to 2. Now, why would they want to go from 10 to 2? Quite frankly, if they wanted Dak Prescott enough, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. They have not signed Dak Prescott to a long-term deal because they're not willing to give up the money necessary. And if they're not willing to give up the money necessary, then let's move on, Cowboys. If you don't want him, I know a team that would, the New York Jets. Now, I've seen a lot of Jets fans kind of question Dak Prescott, NFL fans. He is criminally underrated. This is a superstar quarterback that, quite frankly— would solve the Jets quarterback position for the foreseeable future. Again, there's a lot of pieces moving here. You know, the Jets would have to send the second overall pick and their 34th overall pick, that valuable top of the second round pick to the Cowboys. But again, they would maintain flexibility. They'd still have two first round picks in this draft at 10 and 23, which would be great. And you solve the quarterback position. So to me, I think it's phenomenal. Now, part of the reason why the compensation isn't crazy from the Jets to the Cowboys is Dak Prescott just played on the franchise tag for over 37 million. Now, he's likely going to get tagged by the Cowboys again, but this is why it would be a sign in trade. Dak Prescott wants a long-term deal. If the Jets are acquiring him and moving all this capital, they have to sign him to a long-term extension, and that long-term extension will likely make him either the highest-paid football player in NFL history or among the highest-paid players. According to SpotTrack's market value, it's a projection of what these players can get. It projects that Dak Prescott could get up to $36.8 million per year in a four-year deal for $147 million. That would rank him among the top three quarterbacks in all of football. Now, there have been reports that Dak Prescott actually wants uh, $40 million per season. And even if that was the case, we're talking about a four-year deal for $160 million. Regardless, the Jets would get an immediate upgrade and solve the quarterback issue. Plus, 
you still have Sam Darnold, who you can also flip uh, for a late first round pick to make up even more of that compensation. Because obviously, if the Cowboys are moving up to two, they don't need Sam Darnold because they're going to draft their own quarterback with the second overall pick. This one is tasty. This one is tantalizing. And quite frankly, it should be even higher on this list. But nonetheless, I think that one uh, is absolutely fascinating. We should be talking about it. We've been talking about another quarterback of the state of Texas. Maybe another one should be in that conversation. we got two more tradeback scenarios, and then we're going to dive into all your wonderful NFL draft questions that you sent in on Twitter. Again, if you'd like to follow me there, at Boy Green 25 B-O-Y, green the color, 25. All right, number two, the New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, in this scenario, the Jets would send the second overall pick to the Bengals in exchange for the fifth overall pick, the 38th overall pick in the second round, a second round pick in 2022, and... Wide receiver Auden Tate. Now, many people have told me the Bengals are, quote, desperate to get Penny Sewell offensive tackle out of Oregon. Joe Burrow has, w- was mugged throughout his entire rookie season. And uh, you obviously have Jonah Williams here from Alabama, but he's been hurt. So they need a tackle. And apparently they need a tackle bad. Now, the only way for the Bengals to guarantee they land Penny Sewell is by trading ahead of the Miami Dolphins, who have the number three overall pick. And it would make a lot of sense for the Dolphins to solve that Laramie Tunsil hole by simply drafting Penn A. Sewell, which would be, you know, interesting. So if the Bengals want to do it, they'd have to move up. Now, I'll be candid here. In a draft like this, where quarterback is so rich, I would be surprised if a team was willing to give up a ton of assets to move up for a Reads notes, offensive tackle. No, I get it. Left tackle is a primo position in football, and I understand the value of it. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised. And there's enough people whispering in my ear saying, hey, the Bengals could do this. The Bengals could do this. So I had to put it in the top five. Now, this trade is great uh, for the Jets for a lot of reasons. First off, it keeps them in the upper echelon. For all these trade back scenarios, outside of the Bears, obviously, I think the Jets want to stay in the top 10. I don't think you want to get too crazy and drop back too far. And quite frankly, you don't have to. You'll find that out when we talk about the number one trade back scenario on this list. But for me, you want to stay in the upper tier. You still want to get a blue chip player. And I think you could still stay there and get a lot of great assets. So again, I think this trade is great for the Jets. You stay in the top five. Phenomenal. You get valuable assets this year and next year. Plus, you take a flyer on Auden Tate. I don't remember. I don't know if you guys heard me there. Auden Tate is 24 years old. He just turned 24 at the beginning of February. He's got great measurables, six foot five, 228 pounds. And he's somebody who's quite frankly buried on the Bengals roster. They got guys like Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, AJ Green is a pending free agent. And per over the cap, Tate has one year left on his deal. Uh, heading into next season for just under a million bucks. Take a flyer, throw crap at the wall and see if it sticks. I think that would be awesome uh, for the New York Jets. And again, you stay uh, in the top five, which could be phenomenal. All right, let's talk about the number one thing here. And again, then we'll get into our wonderful draft questions. The New York Jets and the Atlanta Falcons, this is a match made in heaven in terms of a potential partnership between one team or the other. The Jets and the second overall pick, And the Atlanta Falcons in the fourth overall pick, the 35th overall pick in the second round, and the 68th overall pick in the third round. According to the draft value chart, this would be an exact identical match, 2,600 points for 2,600 points, where, again, the the Falcons give up their first three picks, first, second, and third round, to move up two spots. According to the draft value chart, it is a perfect match in terms of the point totals. And, of course, for the Jets— You get the treasure trove of picks. You would add to that. They would have eight picks in the top 100 of this 2021 NFL draft, which is terrific. And consider this, even though it's an even pick swap and it's fair on the board, we all know that there is that extra luxury tax when you trade up for a quarterback and when there's competition. I just talked about all these teams in the, in our top five list that could potentially trade up here. Again, when there's competition, you got to pay more, baby. And when it's for a quarterback you're moving up for, you got to pay even more than that. So keep that in mind, especially in these tradeback scenarios, that if a team is moving up for a quarterback, the Jets could get even more than this. And this would be obviously a wonderful haul, and still you stay in that top four. So, again, I think this is the most intriguing on multiple levels. Again, the Jets stay in the top four. They add several pieces, including back-to-back picks in the second and third round. I think that's super valuable. The Jets would still have the fourth overall pick, the 34th overall pick, the 35th overall pick, and the 67th and 68th overall picks. All those back-to-back picks is a unique opportunity to go bang, bang, getting impact players. And I think that could really help uh, the Jets in a lot of way. Now, guys, I want you to savor all of those plans again. I had to recap the list real quick. Jets Bears, monster deal. The Jets get back Roquan Smith and a bunch of picks, but they drop down all the way to 20. You have Jets Panthers, they drop only to eight. 
and they get a bunch of picks and Yader Gross Matos. Number three, Jets, Dallas Cowboys. You get Dak Prescott and you keep two first round picks. Number two, the New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, you stay in the top five. And finally, the New York Jets and the Atlanta Falcons, a bunch of picks uh, coming your way. So savor the flavor there on that one, folks. Let that bask in a little bit. If you have any comments or questions as you're watching this video, drop them down in the YouTube comments down below, and we'll get to them uh, and keep this interactive uh, for this segment. All right, let's dive into the mailbag. And this is the first one ever, the first Mock Draft Monday mailbag. That's a lot of M's and a lot of alliteration. All of that here on the show. So we're diving into the first one ever. Again, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive in to your wonderful questions. Let's go to Alex V., at New York Jets Live 24, the question is, who has the better hairstyle, Sam Darnold or Zach Wilson? Wonderful question. Great way to start, start this off. I've got both of their photos in front of me here, and I'm going to be blunt. I think this is a bloodbath. I don't think this is close. Sam Darnold, by far, has the superior, superior hair upstairs. Now, I also want to randomly bring this up, and other people have said this, so I understand, but Zach Wilson really does have a punchable face. Like, others have made that observation. I just want to say it's worth mentioning. It really means nothing in terms of the draft eval, but I just wanted to bring that up. But I will say, uh, in terms of Zach Wilson, I think he's a super exciting player to watch on tape. Uh, Talking ball with, uh, again, BYU offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, Coach Roderick, was fun. Uh, Zach Wilson is just a talented dude. Seems like a genuine guy. The great storytelling there by Roderick. Again, if you haven't seen that interview, it's in my playlist, Mock Draft Monday, where we talked to him. And we talked about how good of a person, quite frankly, Zach Wilson is on top of his great prowess on the football field. And randomly, since you brought up Sam Donald, I do just want to address this. And it seems to be a topic on Jets social media. The Sam Donald part of this equation is Sam hasn't been so bad during his career that I'm like, oh, my God, don't throw a pick, Sam. Don't throw a pick, Sam. Oh, there's a pick. Like when at the end of the Mark Sanchez reign, when I went to a Jets game live in person, it was Jets Bills on the road near the end of the Sanchez tenure. I'm just saying to myself, please, Sanchez, don't throw a pick. Please, Sanchez, don't throw a pick. And then he would throw one. And I was just – the same thing with Geno Smith. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, I've never felt that way about Sam Darnold. I think he's a special kid. I think he's talented. I think he can have success elsewhere. But really, the reason why I'm more willing to move on than I was, you know, a month or two ago is because of the money. You owe him – you have to make a decision on the fifth-year option coming up in May and $25 million. It's just impossible to make that kind of gamble, especially when apparently the Jets could get a first-round pick back for him. So, you know, it's going to be a sad day when the Jets – if and when the Jets do decide to move on from Sam Darnold. I just want to throw that out there <clears throat> as uh, just something from the heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go through the rest of these questions here. Jets fan since 1988 tweets in – in regards to the Jameson Crowder story today, how do you feel about drafting Amari Rogers in the third round? As a Clemson fan, I could say he's more than capable of holding down the slot and returns. Love the versatility. Great question, Jets fan, since 1988. First off, what, what is he talking about? Let's get into the Jameson Crowder story that broke here on Monday. It's not really a breaking story for that nature. It's just an observation. Jamison Crowder, as people, as we're getting closer to free agency, again, it's a, it's a month away. Uh, the new league year kicks off on March 17th. The big thing here is potential cap casualties. The Jets have plenty of cap room. They're projected over $68 million per over the cap. They can cut three veterans like Henry Anderson, Alex Van Roten, and uh, or Greg Van Roten and Alex Lewis mixed up those names. They could cut all those guys and create another $16, $17 million in cap space. So they could really have nearly 80-something million. So when we get close to frequency, people start saying, okay, how can we save money? Can, who can we cut and save a bunch of money? Jamison Crowder is, of course, vulnerable because his cap charge is a team high $11.4 million, including a non-guaranteed $10 million in base salary, which is obviously a high number for a slot receiver. And does a team with a ton of cap space, as I just said, would you be willing just to create money to create money? That's the thing. Because if you look at the Jets wide receiver room, you got Jamison Crowder, Denzel Mims, who I'm really high on, Braxton Berrios, and nothing, and a bunch of guys. So I wouldn't cut him, and I'll kind of give you some more reasons why and some more analytics and stats to answer the question. If I'm moving on from James Crowder, the other way I'm moving on is by trade, and I, I think someone would trade a valuable asset for him. But the other part of it is, you know, he's the Jets' most talented player on offense, and of course that was on a team that was 2-14 and 14 last year, but he's a very talented player. He is obviously being paid above market value for a slot receiver because you can replace that production 
a little bit cheaper and some options the Jets could consider in free agency. Other slot receivers like Juju Smith-Schuster of the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Chris Godwin of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if he makes it there. Uh, also a name Rich Samini mentioned in his story was Kendrick Bourne of the San Francisco 49ers, a cheaper option, which again, uh, systematically could make sense to save money. Uh, Jamison Crowder uh, turns 28 uh, during the summer. Uh, and here's some more ESPN stats and info nuggets from Rich Samini. Uh, Jamison Crowder ranks seventh in receptions and eighth in yards on plays from the slot position over the last two years. That's 91 catches and over 1,000 yards. And another factor is how does the slot receiver play in the LaFleur offense? And if you look back during the, the time of the San Francisco 49ers over the past four years, from 2017 to 2020, the 49ers wide receivers caught 258 passes out of the slot. That was 29th best uh, in the league. So, again, worth noting that. Great nuggets there uh, from Rich Samini. Uh, to answer the Amari Rodgers part of the question, I've covered Syracuse football locally here uh, for the last decade, and I've seen all of Amari Rodgers' Clemson-Syracuse games. He's a special player. I think he's been buried on the depth chart at Clemson. They've had a lot of talented receivers over the years, Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Mike Williams. Um, go through the list. There's been so many guys uh, recently that have really popped and he's just had to wait his turn uh, when, you know, some of those opportunities come. And then a few years removed, he had a torn ACL and he lost a year. And a lot of people questioned, would, would he have the same explosiveness? And the, and uh, the answer was yes. If you look at all the tape from last year. So, you know, what I would say is his ability after the catch is what should intrigue the Jets in this new LaFleur offense. Yak is going to be a huge thing. So Amari Rodgers would be a great fit. I love it. Great question, Jets fan, since 1988. I would love to see it. And Jameson Crowder, I would not cut him. I, I would restructure if I have to. I would trade him if I'm going to 1,000% a, a move on to have the extra cap space. But I'm not straight up cutting him. That is not happening. Another question here uh, from Jets fan since 1988. This missed, the cut last, this missed the cut last week when I asked questions, but uh, let me squeeze it in here for this mailbag. RB is starting to become a little devalued. As much as I like Najee Harris and Travis Etienne, I wouldn't take them with pick 23 or 34. We should go edge or corner there. Value can come on day two and three. What are your thoughts on Kenny Gainwell and Elijah Mitchell? Uh, first off, the first part of what you said, I love Najee Harris out of Alabama. I love Travis Etienne out of Clemson. And they're tantalizing talents, obviously. And the Jets have picks that you would think would be in the range. 23 is certainly in the range of where those guys are going to go. And maybe 34, if you're lucky, is where Najee or Travis will still be on the board. You know, we hear it every year. Running backs can be found in the mid-rounds, like guys like, uh, you know, Alvin Kamara was a third-round pick. Kareem Hunt was, I believe, a third-round pick. I, I mean, again, go through history. There's so many great running backs you can find. And I think Joe Douglas is a believer in positional value and things of that nature. So I think he can – I think he thinks he can find talent mid to later. So I would be surprised if he went there either 23 or 34. I love Najee, and I'd love to see him in the offense because I'd love the Jets to have a bell cow. Uh, but the fact of the matter is this new LaFleur offense, they normally just kind of have that same mindset of we can insert anyone here in the backfield and crank out a thousand yards. I'll talk about it a little bit more with the next question, which is very similar. But to answer your question on Gainwell, amazing production from 2019 at Memphis. He opted out of 2020. Um, it's an interesting conversation. The players that opted out and we'll see this through the draft process. How is their stock impacted? Is it impacted at all? He didn't, you know, Gainwell didn't play last year. So what is it? Uh, but I will just say, you know, based on the tape, I, I love the versatility, running running the football, obviously, receiving the football. And I just love the comfort level. And, and he doesn't seem like he's out of place catching a football out of the back, though. He seems very comfortable in that. And uh, I think that's important. And then on Elijah Mitchell, Elijah Mitchell or Elijah McGuire? Raging Cajuns, baby. So, uh, you know, on Mitchell, he participated in the Reese's Senior Bowl. It's hard for running backs to stand out in Mobile with kind of how they have it set up. Uh, he's powerful, strong as an ox as a runner. Uh, during his college run, he worked in tandem. So that's probably what he'll do in the NFL. And quite frankly, that's what NFL teams really do anyway. There's not a lot of bell cows left in the league. So he'd be part of rotation. And I think it speaks to the depth of the class, quite frankly, uh, that uh, he would be available at that spot. So 100%, I would be interested in Gainwell and or <clears throat> Mitchell. All right, let's go to NYJ Mike. Who is the Jets starting running back week one of 2021? Great question. And uh, as we kind of talked about in the thread underneath the question, I, I think it's an under talk, under discussed topic in Jets land. Uh, is it Josh Adams? Is it LaMichael P. Ryan? Is it Ty Johnson? 
or one of the draft dudes we just talked about. I- I'm sure it won't be another free agency splurge. I'm rolling out an Aaron Jones because Le'Veon Bell, that obviously just played out horribly. So I think that will burn them in the meantime. I don't think they're going to do that. And quite frankly, again, as I just talked about in the last question, the 49ers Shanahan LaFleur offense prides itself on the running back can really do it no matter where you get the running back. Remember back in the Mike Shanahan days in the Denver days when they had uh, Clinton Portis, Dr. Dewich big and uh, the, the huge personality he had, they ended up trading him to Washington. They got back champ Bailey and that crazy deal and champ Bailey, a hall of famer, Clinton Portis, maybe a future hall of famer. So <clears throat> going back to those days, I would say again, um, you know, I think they think they could put anyone in there. Uh, guys I would be thinking of that could be the starting running back next year, Tevin Coleman. Uh, the Jets sniffed around him a couple of years ago when he was available and went to the 49ers. Um, it makes even more sense now with the scheme. Uh, Matt Breed is a guy to keep an eye out for. Mike Davis had a nice pop with Christian McCaffrey uh, out last year. Uh, Jerk McKinnon is 100% a guy to keep an eye out for. Uh, Jet fans, keep an eye out for that one now healthy and uh, schematically makes a lot of sense. But to answer your question, Mike, uh, I'm going to say this. I don't think that player is currently on the roster. So take that for what you will. All right, let's go to Captain Jet Sparrow here. Final question here on the Mock Draft Monday mailbag. What do you think is the ceiling for Zach Wilson and Justin Fields? Any good pro comps you can think of for both? So first off, I'll go to the pro comps. Uh, For Zach Wilson, the names I keep hearing are Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Jet fans, if you hear that, not too shabby, uh, which seems crazy to compare him to those kind of players. But you just see it when you watch the tape and you see the throw angles and the platform throws. You can just see, you know, images of, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers. He's not Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes, but you can see those glimpses and some of the crazy throws and his ability to extend plays and things of that nature. So, I'll stay with what the experts are saying in terms of that is ability to make plays. I love it. Uh, Justin Fields, and here's a sneak peek, folks. If you're watching this video right now, I should have an Ohio State breakdown. I had one for Zach Wilson, again, talking to the offensive coordinator and uh, quarterback coach. That's already up on the channel. It's in my playlist, Mock Draft Monday. But I'm going to have another one for Justin Fields, and it should be coming out this week. Fingers crossed, schedules holding up on Justin Fields. So keep an eye out for that one. I'm hoping that one drops on Wednesday. But again, just hit subscribe and hit the bell notification. You'll be alerted every time a new video drops. But uh, on uh, Justin Fields, I've heard people say Cam Newton. I don't like that comparison. And it's because, quite frankly, Cam Newton is, you know, 6'5", 6'6", 250 pounds. Justin Fields isn't that big. He, he's shorter. He weighs a lot less. I, to me, no. I, I don't like that. If I had to put one on the spot, a poor man's Dak Prescott, maybe? I, I, I mean, I'm sure, and I'll do this for you, Captain. When we have the Ohio State Insider on later this week or whenever we do the interview, I think it's going to be this week on Wednesday. We'll see if his schedule holds. I will ask him that question. Who is the pro player comp for Justin Fields? What's his answer? And we'll see what he says, and we'll get his thoughts on the matter. Everybody, I want to thank you again for the overwhelming support on this YouTube channel, this series in general. I couldn't do it without your support. Again, if you like what you heard, you like what you see, you love interacting, Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it. It's fantastic. It's phenomenal. YouTube.com slash Boy Green 25. B O Y Green the Color 25. That's also where you can find me on all social media Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for a Mock Draft Monday. Again, what you have to look forward to on this channel for every Monday, I guarantee it's my promise from me to you is that I will release content every Mock Draft Monday here, whether it's, again, a huge NFL draft expert. I'm going to bring you amazing guests. I've got a great contact list I've been that I've built throughout the years of doing sports talk radio and also just networking and getting connections over the last 10 years. I've got a great Rolodex that I would love to dive into for this YouTube uh, channel and also this series. So, guys, you will not be disappointed with the guests we're going to be having on this show. Plus, we're going to do a lot of these kind of interactions where I answer your draft questions and give you a jet scenario, like today, top five trade back scenarios. Which one did you like? Which one did you hate it? Which one's realistic? Which one's not? I want to hear all your comments down below. Make sure you do it, and I'd love to interact with each and every one of you. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for a Mock Draft Monday here. We will see you later this week right here on YouTube.com slash BoyGreen25.